Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a GMAT website called gmathacks.com. One of the things I talk about a lot on the website and I love for my GMAT students are mental math tricks. On the GMAT, you don't get to use a calculator, which means all the math you do has to either be in your head or on paper. And when you're doing a lot of math on paper, you're not going very fast and you don't have very much time on the GMAT to answer a lot of complicated questions. So what I really like is collecting tactics you can use to do common math operations quickly without necessarily going to the paper. And if you do go to the paper, breaking it down to very simple steps that are almost impossible to screw up. So the tactic I want to show to you today is how to easily multiply by 9. Numbers don't have to get very big before multiplying by 9 gets to be problematic. Let's say you've got 17 times 9. I mean, I guess I could write that out, 17 times 9, and do the work. I'm not going to right now, but I certainly can't do that in my head. And I'm actually pretty good at doing stuff like that in my head. So what I'm going to do is take that operation and break it down a little bit. So instead of doing 17 times 9, which as we've just established is a little tricky, we're going to turn that 9 into a 10 minus 1. 9 is the same as 10 minus 1. We're not doing anything shady here. We're just simplifying. So now we're going to go back to our algebra rules. 17 times the quantity 10 minus 1 is the same as 17 times 10 minus 17 times 1. And both of those, I hope, are very easy. Multiplying by 10 doesn't get much easier than that. That's 170. Multiplying by 1, it definitely doesn't get easier than that. We've got 17. Now we've got a simple subtraction problem. We're at 153. That's the whole process. We're turning the 9 into a 10 minus 1. So we might be introducing a couple more steps, but the key here is that these steps are almost bulletproof. No one's going to screw up 17 times 10 or 17 minus 1. All we're left with is a simple subtraction problem. Under the pressure of the GMAT, Tactics like this are important because not only do they help you do this on paper or in your head, something that you normally might turn to Excel or a calculator on your desk, but we're breaking it down into steps that no matter how much pressure you're under, you're probably going to be able to handle them just fine. Now the great thing about this tactic is even though I've introduced it as multiplying by 9, the tactic of taking a number and breaking it up into 10 minus 1 it's not limited to 9. You could easily do it with 11. So if you were doing 17 times 11, that's the same as 17 times 10 plus 1. Same deal. Or let's say you had to do 22 times 8. 8 is just 10 minus 2. So 22 times 10 minus 2. That's a little more complicated because we have a 2 involved instead of a 1. But I'm guessing you can multiply 22 times 2 without too much of a problem. So experiment with when you're doing practice problems, when this works for you and when it doesn't. I mean, you might only be comfortable with 9, you might be willing to try it with 11, you might be willing to try it with 8. You don't want to go too far because as soon as you're doing 22 times 6 and turning that 6 into 10 minus 4, you're probably not helping yourself out very much. But for 8s, 9s, 11s, but especially 9s, this is a great way to work through these apparently simple arithmetic problems you'd usually use a calculator for quickly and accurately under the pressure of the GMAT.